Hi, it's Mr. Adams from Middlewood High School. This is a video on the Rutherford Gold Foil Experiment. Um, this experiment is probably one of the most classic experiments in terms of um, atomic structure. And um, what they tend to ask is either about the observation or the conclusion of it. So you sort of kind of have to recap it. All right. Um, we know that the helium alpha particles, right? Helium atoms with other electrons. Now, alpha particles are heliums. Okay, he 4 twos, right? But the electrons are gone. So, the two electrons are gone. So, alpha particles have a 2 plus charge. And this radioactive particle was shot at gold foil. Now, the gold foil is very, 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 very thin. Okay, so what was expected and what happened uh, for the most part was the majority of the alpha particles passed right through the gold foil. But what was unexpected was these large deflections and scatterings of the alpha particles. All right? Now, this was very surprising, and based on the fact that most of the particles passed right through, okay, they concluded that the atom is made up of mostly, okay, empty space. Alright, now, in terms of the deflections now, okay, they knew, they knew that the alpha particles are positive, right? So something that will cause a, a type of repulsion would also have to be positive because like charges repel. So they assumed that um, a small, okay, dense positive area okay was located in the gold atoms and that small dense area which is positive is known as the what yes is known as the nucleus okay so two things the most of the alpha particles passing through determined that the atom is mostly empty space and the fact that they saw these deflections, and all, almost sometimes very very scar scarcely, but they saw some um, repulsions, they assumed that there's a small, dense area called the nucleus, based on those observations. Okay, so we're going to move on. Now, in terms of atomic history, right, we're going to do a quick run-through. Now, our original model was a cannonball model, or... Um, Okay, the cannonball or billiard ball model, okay, that was Dalton's, where the atom was thought to be just a solid sphere. Okay, now remember, they did a cathode ray tube experiment, okay, um, we also did it in class. Okay, then that, like, that got us to this model right here, okay, this is a Crookes tube, cathode ray tube, and we got to Thomson's model, all right? Now, Thomson um, discovered, essentially, discovered the electrons, right? So, we assumed that the electrons are spread out, and the positive charge also was spread out, okay, which was called the cookie dough model, where the electrons are spread out in the, negative electrons are spread out in the positive uh, mass of the, of the atom, so both things are basically spread out, all right, now, what went on from there, right, we had Rutherford's goal for experiment, which we just, just discussed, right, and we found from that, that Rutherford said that the, the, Nucleus contains a small, um, a small and dense, and has a positive charge in it. So that's Rutherford's model with the electrons um, orbiting around the nucleus. Now um, Rutherford's model had a problem in that if the electrons are negative and the nucleus is positive, how come the electrons are not attracted towards the nucleus and go crashing into it? So, from there, Bohr made some calculations and determinations, and he came up with the Bohr model of the atom, and he said that um, electrons are located in specific energy levels, and that they can actually travel from one energy level to another if they gain or lose a certain amount of energy. For example, if an uh, electron drops from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, okay, we know that energy would be released in terms of heat, light, and colors, all right? Now, there was an improvement on Bohr's model, 
we that got us to our current model that we now we now know, which is called the charge cloud model. It is also called the quantum okay mechanical model. All right, so there's a couple of names, a quantum mechanical model, a charge cloud model, or orbital model. Now, in our um, charge cloud model, we also still have our nucleus in which the protons and neutrons are located, but the electrons are in a cloud around the atom, and we, exa we don't know exactly where the electrons are, but we can determine that they're located in regions called orbitals, regions of probability, called orbitals where we're most likely to find the electrons. So that's a brief history of um, our atom. Um, the the um, Goldfoil experiment got us from Thompson to this model over here. Okay, the cathode ray got us from here to here. All right, and uh, that's it. All right, guys, uh, this is a brief uh, recap of the Goldfoil experiment. Um, it's a classic experiment. They tend to ask you about the observations, which you know, and the conclusions from those observations. As always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. Take care. Do well.